Good morning kids, today we're checking out a brand new video from Popcraft Studios of turning famous cartoons into Suicide Squad members part 4. Let's hop in and see what he does. For the final episode of my Suicide Squad Grand Prix, where I'm doing three different Suicide Squad videos three Mondays in a row, I decided to return to a- Hold on, quality drop. Alright, we're back. Let's go. A classic Suicide Squad series on this channel, taking famous cartoon characters and putting them on the Suicide <laughs> Squad. And specifically nice. working in two different Vivzy Pop characters to this episode, since Vivian Madrano's animated series, Has Been Hotel, has finally started airing on Amazon Prime. And I'm loving that Love series, it. so I'm totally into the idea of doing a full Has Been Hotel episode of some kind, whether spin-off of this series or doing something else with the characters. So leave me some suggestions in the comments of what you'd want to see me do with them, other than turning it into a horror story, which I've already done with It and Hell of Boss. <laughs> Good videos, by the way. That. I'll link them in the description. But anyway, let's cram some more characters into Belle Reeve, shall we? Let's go! Hit like if you want. Subscribe, Subscribe if you feel like, like it. it. But either way, enjoy the show. Enjoy the show. Oop, hold on, hold on. Give it a moment. Ah, of course, we're starting out with the one and only owner of the hotel, Charlie Morningstar. Many universes have been home to variations of the being known as Lucifer. Sometimes his name is synonymous with Satan or the devil. Sometimes he is a bringer of great death and torment, and others he is a misunderstood angel who wanted what was best for humans. In the realm we visit today, one where Amanda Waller runs her covert supervillain prison task force, In Lucifer hell? Morningstar had ruled <laughs> over hell for many lifetimes. Before deciding, he was just bored of it. And so he banished all demons from hell, locked its gates, and gave the keys to a being called the Sandman. He then Wait, came what? to modern-day Los Angeles on Earth and started a nightclub, which some would say is its own version of hell. <laughs> he ran this club for some Not years, wrong. but eventually he was given a task by heaven, which, if completed, would grant him the power to create his own universe. He accepted, and this would take up the majority of his time and attention, leaving his newborn daughter to be a distant second in terms uh -oh. of his priorities. Charlie Morningstar would grow up with what? much of her father's vast abilities, including the power to make anyone confess what they truly desired, but on top of that, she had strength, speed, some shape-shifting, flight, power enough that she could hold her own against the likes of the Justice League if need be. Damn. Though fighting was not in her nature. Even yeah, without her father true. being particularly present in her life, Charlie still developed her own desire to help demons banished from hell and residing on Earth. She'd heard her father complain on odd occasions when he was around that demons were frequently wreaking havoc on Earth, and he would be blamed for it. The result would often be someone killing the demon or it being banished from Earth, but Charlie wanted to help them learn how to wait, live- Wait, 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 well, well, would it be banished from? I mean, hell is no longer an option because that place has literally been locked down. So, well, do you banish what's already been banished? Just uh, erase it from existence? I, I need answers now. ...peaceful lives on Earth, so they could properly integrate into society and enjoy their time here. Of course, her first problem was simply finding them before they drew too much unwanted attention. Soon enough, she would get a chance to try and help a group of demons, referred to as the Demons Three. They'd done their fair share of bad things on Demons Earth, and had three. even faced mm. off against the likes of the Justice League, but they had escaped them. Now, unfortunately, they were being hunted by someone more lethal. They'd come to try and hide in L.A. while being hunted down by a being some thought of as a hero, some thought of as a villain, but regardless, he was more than willing to kill his targets, especially Deadpool? if they were demons. Their hunter was Black Adam. Oh, Charlie okay. had heard that he'd just recently killed another demon, Sabak, and she wasn't eager to let him kill more of her people, not without them getting a chance at redemption and a proper life on Earth. She quickly found the Demons Three and told them who she was, but they simply laughed, claiming there was no way she was the daughter of Lucifer. Their skepticism, though, would soon fade. Black Adam himself soon arrived on the scene, commanding Charlie to step aside and let him finish off his targets. He claimed that no demon deserved a chance at life, and they should be immediately wiped from the face of the earth. He claimed that hell should be forever, <laughs> whether she liked it or not. Charlie was oh my god, I just got it. Black Adam, because of episode one's Adam, and he literally just referenced the song Hell is Forever. Oh, ho, ho. I, I, clap and a half of this guy. I'm sorry, but <laughs> perfect, perfect. <laughs> was an inherently diplomatic person, so she tried to kindly talk Black Adam down, but 
he quickly grew irritated with her. He grabbed her by the neck, intending to simply carry her out of his sight, but she quickly smacked his arm away. Shifting into her own demon form as the Princess of Hell, she punched <laughs> Black Adam so forcefully his body's impact made a massive crater in the ground. Their ensuing battle would soon be enough to catch the Justice League's attention. They'd yeah, arrive yeah. on the scene and be shocked to find someone holding her own so well against a being with the might of Black Adam. They assisted her in taking him down, as they weren't a fan of his methods either and he'd committed plenty of crimes as well. But then they mm -hmm. intended to use a set of artifacts Batman had uncovered to banish the Demons Three from Earth. Of course, Charlie protested. She said that they should be given a chance to be rehabilitated and re-enter society just like anyone else, and maybe even given the potential to use their demon powers for good. Okay, now I'm really curious who the demon three are. Like, is that Angel, Alistair, and Vaggy? I, I, I don't know. Many members of the League were skeptical about demons being given another chance, but Charlie made a good pitch, and so instead they'd end up being sent to the supervillain prison, Del Reeve a place Batman would bring Charlie to with a suggestion. He'd long known about Amanda Waller's Suicide Squad and did not approve, but also had never been able to shut it down. Waller claimed, to the few people who knew about it, that forcing criminals to use their abilities to the benefit of their country could help encourage them to do good with their powers when they were eventually set free. Yeah, but Batman go. knew that was all just an excuse. Waller didn't actually care about rehabilitating criminals. She just wanted to use them to do her bidding, then execute them if they stepped out of line. Yeah, that's also Maybe Charlie true. could help with that. If they could convince Waller to bring her on as a field warden for Task Force X and be the genuinely positive influence they needed. It wasn't a pitch Waller would have accepted without some significant benefit to her, but luckily, as Charlie had just proven against Black Adam, she was an absolute powerhouse that could up the fighting force of her squad significantly. As another angle of the deal, Batman promised that any time going forward if the League came across demons causing problems, as long as it was a possibility, they'd capture them like any other supervillain and send them to Belle Reeve, where Charlie would get a chance to help rehabilitate them, <laughs> as she so desired. Love there were it. many moving pieces to this plan, but amazingly, they all fell into place. Charlie Morningstar would become Belle Reeve's resident rehabilitation expert, and would spend her life helping those who claimed they didn't want any help, but who truly needed it the most. Hmm. Now I'm curious what that mission uh, that Lucifer was giving to Pep. Like, what could it be? Hmm. Most of the time when someone joins oh, Waller's hey, Task Demona. Force X, it's because they see it as the only way to reduce their prison sentence in Belle Reeve. Occasionally a villain wants an excuse to just get out and stretch their legs and powers, but it's very rare that someone is genuinely, incredibly eager to join the squad. One exception being the case of Nimona. The name was- You know, never actually watched the movie. One she'd been given by the Maasai powers, people though. in Kenya where she grew up. She'd been abandoned on the side of a road when she was just a baby, and had been taken in by the people there. She was different in many ways from those in the village, and was often scolded for trying to get far too close to animals that could easily harm her, such as hyenas and rhinos. She appreciated her village, <laughs> yeah. but was a bit of a natural troublemaker, and was incredibly curious. Which oh, led her to snooping a lot <laughs> on the home of a scientist who'd built an isolated lab on the Maasai Mara land to do his experiments. Dr. Mark Logan had brought only his wife, Marie, and his son, Garfield, along with him to live in oh, this new lab. Oh, I thought I recognized that. And it's uh, Beast Boy's father. Oh, uh -huh. Yeah, the moment he said, and their son, Garfield, immediately my brain was just like, Beast Boy. Because that's actually his real name, Garfield. Garfield Logan. But Where he was attempting to make Boy. a formula to rapidly reverse the evolution of animals. What was the intended practical application of this? You got me, but it would eventually come in handy for him. Nimona would watch a whole odd ordeal play out, where Dr. Logan would successfully create his formula, but promptly after his son would get sick with a disease that was allegedly incurable in humans, but apes could recover from it. And so Dr. Logan injected Garfield with his formula, reversing his evolution back to that of an ape, and he was able to recover. But much more happened yes. to him as well. Garfield's skin would turn permanently green, and he gained the ability uh -oh. to transform into any different animal he thought of. Okay, that's not Which bad. would someday lead to him joining the Teen Titans as the hero called Beast Boy. Nimona desperately... Uh, correction, that would be the second team he joined. The Beast Boy, aka Garfield Logan, would originally join in the Doom Patrol, 
under the name Beast Boy before eventually that team separated and he ended up in Jump City being found, uh, being a founding member of the Teen Titans with Robin, Cyborg, Starfire, and Raven. And people gotta remember that. He was part of the Doom Patrol first, Teen Titans second. Though I can understand the mix-up. She wanted these abilities for herself as well, so she snuck into the man's lab and stole three full doses of the formula, oh, crap. then promptly injected herself with all of them, oh, just crap. to make sure it worked. And work it did. Nimona's skin would turn permanently pink instead of green, but her abilities would also progress much faster. She'd quickly become able to turn into any animal she thought of, but also change the size of different animal limbs and maintain different ones at a time, giving herself giant bat wings, a crocodile tail, Komodo dragon arm, and a gorilla fist all at once. Damn. Unfortunately, when she'd show this off to her village, they would have far from a positive response. She'd already been seen as a troublemaker, but now they were calling her Popobawa. This was the name of a legendary shape-shifting evil spirit, whose name literally translated from Swahili into Batwing. She was run out of her oh, okay. home and left with nowhere to go, so she just started to fly. She followed some of the roads and eventually reached Nairobi, a far bigger city than she'd ever been to. She began shape-shifting into small animals to steal food and even get some new clothes, and would sometimes even be a bit careless on purpose, letting herself get caught just so she could have a good chase. Having been cast out from her home, <laughs> she craved rebellion, and soon, she'd find a pretty good influence for that. While she was perched on the top of a building, munching on some stolen food, she saw someone leaping between rooftops in a white helmet and armored suit, carrying multiple guns. Nimona thought he looked pretty metal and flew on after him. It turned out Deadshot had been hired for an assassination on a Nairobi-based arms dealer, but was unable to get a beat mm. on his target from outside. He ended up crashing the target's base and going up against a whole team of armed guards. Nimona had followed him in and started using her shape-shifting powers to help take down the guards, then turned into a python to wrap up the main target for Deadshot. She quickly started calling the assassin boss and boldly claimed that she was going to be his new sidekick. He appreciated the help, but having a daughter Good himself, luck. he wasn't eager to put a young woman's life in danger just to help him out. He tried to ditch her, but she was persistent. To a point where he eventually just had to accept that he wasn't going to get rid of her. Oh, she ended God. up coming back to America <laughs> with him and continued to help him on his assassination jobs. All the while being told of his various past adventures, including his time on Task Force X. He didn't speak highly of it, but Nimona thought it sounded mm. like the coolest gig in the world. Getting to oh, work alongside no whole teams of rebels and outcasts while using her powers to fight people. Nimona liked working with Deadshot, but soon her biggest desire was to be part of the Suicide Squad. Eventually, Deadshot would take a break from being an assassin to spend some time with his daughter and lay low, so Nimona would take the opportunity mm. to go and try to live out her big dream. She went to the gates of Bel Reeve and busted them down. Dozens of guards came after her and she fought them all for quite a while, showing off her skills, before eventually just surrendering and simply letting herself get captured. <laughs> With a show of force what? as big as that, Waller herself would interrogate the girl, and Nimona would claim that that had been her audition for the squad. Waller wasn't oh one to turn God. down an asset <laughs> as valuable as Nimona, though the girl would prove He's to be crazy. more flashy and outgoing than Waller wanted on her covert team of villains. But Nimona would finally get to be around people who appreciated her gifts, and any time she'd go on enough missions to get her prison sentence reduced to zero, She'd have a bad habit of then going on a rampage of Belle Reve once again to rack up another 10 years or so. <laughs> At that point, you gotta just stop with the prison sense and just be like, all right, look, we'll hire you permanently if you just stop attacking our people. <laughs> Love it. Gotham City has more than its fair oh, share of criminal organizations. Oh, freaking course. Blitzo! I'm sorry, I mean Blitz, the boss of IMP. Stations that keep Batman and his allies busy. <laughs> But Brandon Blitz Buxo figured there was always room for another. Blitz okay, had well, actually that, that that I like because the voice actor of Blitzo is Brandon Rogers. So Brandon Buxo Blitz is actually good. Oh wait, what did he say? Hold on. Brandon Blitz Buxo. Brandon Blitz Buxo. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so yeah, you combine the voice actor and Blitzo's real name. Love it. Figured there was always room for another. Blitz had actually come to Gotham for the first time with a group called Halley's Circus. He'd been a young performer in the circus alongside a friend of his, Dick Grayson. 
whose whole family performed Hi. a trapeze act Flying in the braces. show. While the show was in the city, a local crime boss named Tony Zuko had come to talk to circus management in an attempt to force them to pay protection money. When management refused, Zuko planned to make them regret it. As he was leaving, he saw that Blitz had been listening. He asked the kid if he wanted to make some money. He offered Blitz 500 bucks to loosen the ropes on the trapeze before the next show. Uh-oh. It was more money than Blitz had ever seen, but he didn't want to hurt Dick or his parents. Zuko promised that the net below them would still catch them when they fell. He just wanted to send a message. Desperate for what seemed like the fortune he was being offered, he took the money and did as the man <laughs> oh, said. No. And, of course, anyone familiar with Nightwing's story knows how that turned out. Yeah. Zuko had ensured that the net was also cut, so when Dick's parents fell, there was nothing to catch them, and they were both killed. Blitz was devastated, especially because he'd always had a thing for Dick. But trying to apologize for what he'd done under Zuko's orders went about as well as you'd expect. Grayson punched Blitz in the face and swore to never speak to him again. Before Blitz could make any more attempts to make it up to him, Grayson would leave the circus, and it would be some time before Blitz would see him again. Although, at that point, he'd also leave the circus too, seeing a lot of potential mm -hmm. to make money in the criminal underground of Gotham. His hope was to oh, someday cool. be able to help one of them take down Tony Zuko for what he'd done all the while making a lot of money in the process. Starting young, crime Good bosses luck. were skeptical about hiring a kid, but with his incredible acrobatic skills from the circus and surprising lack of morals when it came to killing, Blitz <laughs> quickly proved he was worth hiring. Unfortunately, oh, as cool. he'd grow up improving his skills as an assassin, Tony Zuko would be gaining more and more power and influence as well, making it harder and harder to get to him. Damn. By the time Blitz reached adulthood, he'd have learned that Dick Grayson had been adopted by billionaire Bruce Wayne, and presumably was living a pretty sweet life. Blitz would keep tabs on him to see what fun adventures his new billionaire daddy was taking him on, but to assuage his conscience, Blitz still wanted to take Zuko down. Blitz had built up enough of a reputation mm. for himself that he decided to start his own criminal empire. Though empire was definitely a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> he called his group the Gotham Murder Professionals, enjoying that he could refer yeah, to his villain attire as his gimp suit. But the most he'd ever oh. gotten to work under him thus far was three people. Still, he eventually made a pitch for them <laughs> to go after Tony Zuko together, both to steal a vast fortune from him, get their name out there as a group not to be messed with, and for Blitz to finally and get his revenge. Bad. Zuko's crime family was getting a massive exchange of bearer bonds that Zuko would be overseeing himself at the Gotham docks. Being out in the open, it would be a perfect place to find- You know, I'll be honest, I'm not really a whole huge fan of the suit, but I'll be honest, I love the story. Suit, not so much. Story, love it. ...finally get him and take out a bunch of his goons. Of course, what they didn't account for was that another group in Gotham was poised to break up that same deal. Blitz and his crew showed up on the scene and started blasting everyone they saw, but... As soon as they did that, Batman, Nightwing, Batgirl, and Robin all leapt out from the shadows as well. <laughs> uh -oh. It was a chaotic mess, but even if he got taken down, Blitz was determined to kill Zuko. He eventually got a gun pointed right at the man's head, but then was tackled aside by Nightwing. Nightwing stated that he had beef with Zuko as well, but that the man was going to face proper justice. Oh, of course, upon taking on. a good look at Nightwing, Blitz immediately recognized him as Dick Grayson. I mean, he was literally just wearing a little domino mask to disguise his face. <laughs> it wasn't that hard to figure that out. All, Blitz yep. didn't reveal who he was at first, instead trying to fight off Nightwing to get at Zuko. But Dick blocked him on every move. Finally, Blitz was too furious to miss this chance, so he just took off his own mask and revealed who he was. Blitz said he had to do this to make it up to Dick. But Grayson's response surprised him. He said that what Blitz had done as a kid was a stupid mistake, but that he'd forgiven him for it a long time ago. More important, though, if Blitz had been living his life as a criminal and murderer ever since, then that was on him, and if he wanted penance, he should go to jail and serve his sentence. Blitz was amazed to hear that Grayson had forgiven him for what he'd done, but he also wanted his own revenge on Zuko, too. He snatched up one of his guns and shot Zuko right in the head, then surrendered to serve the sentence that Grayson said he should. <laughs> the way Blitz saw it, he was off the hook now for all the guilt he'd been harboring, and was totally fine to go away to prison for a little while, confident <laughs> he could find a way to break out eventually. Though quickly he'd learned that, at Belle Reve, breaking out was not the only way to get out early. I mean, the hell, he probably could just hide on the whole team and get you, Millie, Mox, uh, Moxie and Luna on the team. That would be great. 
<laughs> Who's next? Many beings from the fifth dimension have caused... Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Star Butterfly is the fourth character you're doing? That, um... That... I'll be honest, that threw me. I wasn't expecting Problems that. for the likes of Superman, Batman, and the Justice League. But it may surprise some to know that even the residents of this imagination-fueled, reality-warping place can become fed up with their own kind's antics. There was a kingdom within the fifth dimension called Muni, where the princess was causing problems for her people. Her name was Star Butterfly, and a particularly cheeky imp by the name of Mr. <laughs> Mixus Pitalik had gotten in her ear once about how fun it was to visit the lower dimensions huh. and mess around with the people there. Damn it, Star Mr. became Mixus fascinated Pitalik's. with the other dimensions and would go to them and try yeah, bringing that... beings back to her world, and they'd often end up wreaking their own havoc. On top of that, Star was having a much harder time getting control of her reality-warping abilities than other members of her kingdom. Being of the royal family, she had far more potential with her magic than most, but even mm -hmm. after giving her a wand that was meant to help focus and channel her abilities safely, she was having a very difficult time making them do what she wanted. Her parents believed that Good it may show. be due to the naturally unstable environment of the fifth dimension, so they decided if she liked dipping down to the lower dimension so much, You'll maybe she should though. be forced to train there. Her folks didn't know much about Earth in the third dimension, but they knew it had plenty of heroes, and they wanted to find someone who could help their daughter be a bit more mellowed out and less rambunctious, learning oh, both boy. to use her abilities and specifically to use them for good. Someone who could help her to, instead of wreaking havoc, help her make peace. Of course, they probably should have researched their choice a bit past the name. They found the so-called hero Peacemaker and presented. Oh damn it! I thought his name was Peacekeeper. My mistake. Presented their daughter to him, oh, God. stating that they wanted <laughs> him, him to oversee her training with her magic. He thought it was a bunch of ridiculous nonsense at first, but when he saw what she could do with her seemingly magical fifth dimension powers, he was intrigued by how much she could help him. Oh, hold on. This isn't the ad, and we're back. Mentioned powers. He was intrigued by how much she could help him. And so, Star was left with Peacemaker, and became his sidekick, albeit one with infinitely more power than he had himself. <laughs> he quickly oh, taught crap. her his life philosophy, cherish peace with all your heart, and don't care how many men, women, and children you have to kill to get it. Oh no. Star didn't know much about death, as it worked very differently in the fifth dimension, so she just embraced whatever her mentor said. He started taking on bigger and bigger targets now that he had a reality-bending ally by his side. <laughs> Of course, having a partner who couldn't control her abilities and would do things like shoot narwhals at people that she wanted to kill drew more than a little oh attention. The Both narwhals. Peacemaker and Star ended up getting captured and taken to Belle Reeve. Without her wand in hand, Star had very little ability to channel her powers in the third dimension, so she wasn't able to break them both out. Of course, being in a place like Belle Reeve wouldn't exactly be better for helping Star's personality evolve nope. in a positive way. <laughs> being surrounded by more and more supervillains just made her want to embrace her chaotic lifestyle more and more. She was at least able to get some help learning to control her powers, though, from another prisoner who seemed like he was also from her dimension, though she didn't know of any other rabbit people what from the? her home. Still, Star Bugs would embrace Bunny. her time in Bell Reef and do the same thing that her mentor did, join Task Force X to get her sentence Wait, reduced. I'm gonna guess what his name is. If he's called Bugs Bunny in our world, I'm gonna guess his name would be like Benjamin Rabbit or something. I, I don't know. I, I, did, I, I probably would need to go back and actually watch that. <laughs> but still though, Benjamin, Bu Benjamin Rabbit, tell me that isn't funny. Just at the same speed as him. Waller wouldn't give her back her wand on her initial missions, but that would just push her to develop her skills even faster, without a crutch to assist her. All in all, Belle Reeve would be good for her developing her abilities, but if her parents were still hoping she'd eventually come home with a less chaotic personality, nope. <laughs> they were bound to be sorely disappointed. Oh boy, well, I, I gotta say, this threw me. I wasn't expecting star frickin' butterfly, but still, good. All around good.
If you enjoyed this, you might want to check out my Hell of a oh. Boss Spider-Man villains episode. I remember that being a pretty yeah. fun one that I was happy with, <laughs> but you might also like my other various Suicide Squad episodes. I've put lots of different famous cartoon characters on the Suicide Squad, anime characters, mm -hmm. video game characters. Cool. I'll link my entire Joining the Suicide Squad playlist. As usual, all the inks and high-resolution art from this video will be going up for free for everybody on the Popcross Studios Patreon. Haven't mentioned it in a while, but the Popcross Studios Patreon is now free for everybody. But if you also want to support hey. the channel, you can join the $1 a month tier on there as well. Huge thank you to everyone who is supporting me on there, even though you don't get any extra benefits for paying for it. I really appreciate that. But besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or inspiring note. note. And the thought I want to leave people with today is a quote I read oh. this week that said, you become unstoppable oh, hold on, hold on. Okay. start training things that nobody can take away from you. Things like oh. your mindset, character, right. and personality. Personally, I'd say over the last four years, one of the most useful things I've done that's benefited my life is meditating every morning and working in a few other great mental health practices, mm -hmm. like exercising more consistently to help improve my mindset. So I firmly stand behind this quote. I hope that's inspiring. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video on Friday. Well, folks, that's going to be the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Link to the original will be in the description below, and I'll see you folks next time when we flick on. Peace out.